ask everyone to take their seats, please. I have to be retrained. <laughs> So I'm Jimmy from Dime. Where's the road stop? <laughs> but I was a good boy. Yeah. It's red strip light. Yeah. Light. You got everybody? This is all good. Oh, it's all going to be here. To, uh, I know that Councilor Rackers is away, I believe, and Councilor Humphreys so couldn't make it tonight. She's away. Okay. So, Mr. Clerk, we'll get underway. It's uh, one minute after seven. Motion to reconvene. Could I please have um, a motion to reconvene? Councilor Abel? Second, That's Councilor Thompson? Thompson? Motion to reconvene? Oh, yes. All in favor? Contrary? That's Gary. Thank you very much. Oh. Uh, Council will uh, just start with um, uh, declarations of pecuniary I go away for a week and I have to be retrained. Uh, declarations of pecuniary interest, please. <laughs> Seeing none, I uh, will move to approval of the agenda. There's two items that are being added this evening. Item 16, uh, which is a memorandum for the CAO. Uh, follow up from last week's meeting, I believe, and item 17, verbal update from the Director of Corporate and Financial Services. Um, motion to add those to the agenda, please. Councilor Thompson, label. Comes to questions on adding those two. All in favor? Contrary? That is carried. Um, if I may exercise my prerogative and suggest perhaps, Mr. Elliott, that you could start with item 17. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Tonight I just uh, have circulated Schedule 1, it's on your desk, um, just a single uh, document. I draw your attention to the bottom three rows. These are items that you have not seen before. Uh, this is the list of cumulative adjustments that have been made to date. Uh, previous iteration of this, we showed the CAO's $167,000 items all broken down line by line. I've rolled those up just to make space on the page. and. Uh, Earlier in the budget process, we had a delegation from the King, Book, King Aurora Ball Association, and uh, they saw a couple of different things. They were looking for uh, some waiver of fees in exchange for services, which we've already addressed. And uh, they also mentioned in their delegation that they were hoping that the town could assist them with the financing of a pitching machine. A uh, pitching machine runs three to $5,000. Um, staff are recommending that we not get into the business of uh, financing uh, purchases of assets uh, with uh, community groups. I think it's uh, a path that we ought not to be in the business of. We're having enough struggles with our own budgets, and uh, so we recommend that that uh, adjustment be denied. The second one is we have, uh, earlier on, we mentioned the rebound program and the rebound fitness program with the mini trampolines. Uh, we have since uh, also uh, been able to access a grant program under the Elderly Persons Center Grants uh, from the province of Ontario, and there's $15,000 available. And uh, so we're suggesting that we add the program expenses of $15,000 to be offset by a $15,000 grant. And of course, the expenses would not be incurred if we do not receive the grant. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would suggest that we uh, start the evening by approving these adjustments. It's a net zero to the uh, operating budget, but we do need these expenditures uh, budgeted for, for this uh, new program. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Um, would someone care to move that, please? Councilor Tom, thank you. Second? Councilor Abel. Comments or questions specifically either on that or, or Ms. from Mr. Elliott? With respect to this, there's there's no specific change to the budget. Mr. Elliott, yes, more. I was, I was just going to uh, suggest that uh, following those and the adjustments of last week of the $100,000 revenue challenge, the training and development reduction, and the uh, reduction in advertising, this brings us to a net 4.44% uh, tax pressure on the town. Uh, bear in mind, 1.3 of that is from the uh, fire services, and another 0.65% is on our fiscal strategy. And so that leaves us, uh, um, the remainder is uh, all operating. The net impact to the taxpayer, when we consider the region and the education share, is a 2.88 total tax bill increase 
uh, when we consider it all together. So it's uh, 4.44 and 2.88. I can start it. Comments or questions on this right now? Mr. Elliott, anyone? It's very much a wash at this point. I guess all in favor? Contrary. That is carried. Thank you very much. And we'll go back to item 16. Would someone care to put this on the floor and then we'll have a discussion? Which may be wide ranging. Councillor Kim, thank you. Second, Councillor Tom. I am going to ask Mr. Garvey to give us some background on this, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you to members of council. Uh, last week, as you know, uh, there were specific adjustments that were uh, mentioned totaling $230,000. And uh, council asked uh, for uh, additional information on those specific cuts, which we provide in the appendix uh, to the uh, to the short memo. Our suggestion is that council, um, as opposed to looking at the specific lines in the budget, uh, set an overall target for staff, and that uh, we. Uh, uh, manage uh, those cuts uh, as best um, uh, in the areas that, uh, that we think uh, can best uh, maintain a certain level of service uh, and uh, achieve the, the desired results for, uh, for, from Council. So specifically, um, if we look at the, the schedules, uh, specifically travel, travel and training, or training and development actually, we outline the impacts of the cut of $100,000 to our, our budget, and you can see that when you take the $100,000 less than the mandatory training, that leaves uh, $38,000 for the whole corporation uh, um, to achieve its its goals in terms of training. Um, that's not to say that there isn't to, that we couldn't find some economies in in that. Area, but when you take out a full hundred thousand dollars, it makes that program uh, very difficult to uh, uh, to achieve. Um, as council is aware, the, the price of any one given training course or a course uh, uh, is uh, they're not they're not cheap courses, so it does limit their ability to uh, to deliver that service. Um, and secondly, the uh, printing and, and advertising. The lines that are mentioned and you have to, you have to uh, consider is the sheet that was handed out is an amalgam of a whole bunch of lines across the corporation. So the budget of $294,000 when you add up all the lines, uh, you actually have to take out the $32,000 for special events and actually in that is not capturing the revenue which we get for the, for the uh, leisure guide. So when you take those things out, our, our total budget is two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Of that, the bulk is um, related to our advertising that's centered in our communications area, and that's for our uh, notice board. It's for, as you see, some of the the, uh, um, the examples listed on page five. Our traditional advertising it includes our uh, um, the the, the uh, citizen budget program. It includes uh, the um, the things we normally do. The statutory public meeting advertising we do in both in both papers. The trails map, the waste calendar. It's all built into the into those lines. And so uh, when you cut those budgets, you have to understand that there will be a a perceived reduction in the communication that we give uh, uh, throughout the uh, throughout the community. Some of the smaller items are we print the tax bills, and we uh, have a small budget for printing in, in one of the uh, one of the uh, departments to produce a flyer or a brochure. So those are all captured. The five hundred and the thousand dollars here and there, but the bulk of it is for uh, external communications. Information is also sought from telecommunications. You can see from the detail on page six that it captures both our, our landlines as well as our mobile mobile plants. And in that, uh, we do make a, a shift in technology. Uh, and uh, council um, approved our use of uh, the tablets for our park staff. This also includes the the planned 
um, paperless agendas and outfitting um, uh, council with uh, the tablets for that purpose as well. So it, it all it is all uh, detailed in those areas. Um, so once again, our, our suggestion is that if council is comfortable to set a target and allow uh, staff to come forward with a suite of reductions and, uh, to uh, to cover those uh, those cuts and. Um, Recognizing another part is recognizing that we're uh, you know a third of the way through the year, so it's going to be a challenge to uh, to come up with the, the cuts for this year. But the cuts would carry over until next year, and uh, the, the full cost will be annualized next year. So we may not achieve the direct spending targets, but next year they'll be annualized to uh, uh, to achieve the, the results next year. Thank you, Mr. Garvey. Any questions for Mr. Garvey on this? Councilor Hill. Uh, just a small uh, question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Garden, for um, putting that all together. Um, we had, for discussion purposes last week, had mentioned that the mandatory training was $30,000, and I will uh, start out by saying that was just a figure that we asked. Uh, we kind of caught um, staff in a, in a precarious position. It does turn out to be $57,000, so that after we've gone back, uh, perhaps to you, Mr. Mayor, I see Mr. Elliott, that technology. It's true, Mr. Mayor, there's uh, an awful lot of accounts to go through, and uh, on the fly there, Jason did his best to pull out what was identified specifically on a single uh, account, uh, role, uh, account code. Uh, there is mandatory training has been tucked into a, diff a couple of other codes that he missed, and that uh, brings us up to the 54. Thank you very much. Mr. Elliott, for my uh, benefit, could you give us some examples of what the mandatory training is? What programs that may entail? So the mandatory training is for uh, maintaining uh, operational certifications for staff, whether it's professional certifications such as my own, uh, there's professional planners, and, and uh, but the building inspectors need certification every year. Uh, they need to uh, maintain their credentials uh, in that way. Uh, the lawyers have professional development that they have to uh, maintain throughout the year, X number of hours of uh, uh, verified training. There's also uh, mandatory health and safety training and retraining and refresher courses, whether it's uh, uh, in the parks and rec department, uh, even just this year, um, workers working at height have to have special training now. You've heard the ads on the radio, and so this is that type of mandatory training uh, to make sure that uh, people are safe in the workplace, but we're also maintaining our professional credentials that the corporation relies upon. Thank you. Would AODA training follow that as well? Or is that something else, or under a different budget? Uh, that one technically is, is uh, captured under a different budget. It's uh, in our corporate-wide training, but that's also mandatory. So you can see that absolutely there's a little fuzzy, fuzzy line between the, between the two of mandatory training and uh, um, what some might suggest as discretionary training. Uh, in the discretionary stuff is uh, software package training, um, dealing with difficult clients, uh, uh, dealing with telephone inquiries, all, all that stuff that we do to make sure that we're serving our community with excellence and also working efficiently uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Councillor Thompson, Councillor Gardner. Councillor Kim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's really Mr. Elliott. Mr. Elliott, perhaps um, you could follow up with the rest of the council this week and provide some clarification on that mandatory training because uh, if I remember correctly, when Councilor Maracas was talking about it last week, he had indicated that, that number was provided to him by staff in an email. So staff had taken some time to calculate that amount, so it wasn't really on the fly, so to speak. So perhaps the discrepancy between those numbers, you can provide some further clarification to all members of Council, just to clear up that confusion. Thank you. Councilor Gregor. Thank you. Um, in 2014, $100,000 went to council programs and grants. Is that um, the same as uh, community grants, grants to Hillary House? I'm sorry, what's to, what page are you looking at? I'm actually looking at 6-2, section 6. Oh, section 6. Under offices of the mayor and council. 
this is this is in the regular sheets, so we're not speaking specifically to this item at this point. I'm just trying to find ways perhaps we could cut. So I, I, I understand that maybe we can come back to that. That's perfect. I think that might be more so we can deal with this at this point if we can, Council. Thank you. Um, on page three of the edition, well, actually, it's no. um, sorry, I'm wrong about that. On page four, the advertising figure of two hundred and sixty four sixty. Uh, I saw somewhere what it was at the beginning of this, the last council term. Do you have any idea what it was in twenty eleven? And also, how long is the contract with Theoborn? Mr. Kirby? Through you, Mr. Mayor, if I recall, it's through this year? Through 2015. 2015, yeah. Okay, because next year is going to be a challenging year as well. Um, it seems to me that our advertising budget has increased substantially in the last five or six years. Um, and I don't know whether that's partly because of the contract or I don't know what it's because of, but would I be right in saying that it's substantially cre increased? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we have uh, uh, done some work in the last number of years to consolidate all of the advertising uh, or, or focus more and more of it into the communications budget uh, themselves with uh, Mr. Kemp. And uh, so it's quite possible, again, it may have been hiding under other lines called printing and not advertising, or it was uh, under brochures or program expenses, uh, different things. And we have tried our best to uh, uh, hunt through our, our books and try to try to identify everything that falls under advertising and printing. And so this is where we're at now. Um, I do know that we are double advertising now for our planning uh, planning applications. Uh, the they're appearing in both papers, whereas at one point in time we used to when we do it in a single paper. I also, I'm going to ask Mr. Garvey to comment on that. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Through you, Mr. Mayor, we've actually decreased over the last three years, decreased our print advertising. Um, each year we've decreased that uh, because we, our reliance on print media, specifically for, for job ads, has gone down significantly. And we, every year we reevaluate if we can do less uh, with print media, and I don't... Uh, so we've actually decreased it. There might be other areas of the corporation where we've had we've seen an increase. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember one I don't recall off the top of my head. I know that that in this budget has included uh, increased uh, advertising for uh, for the recycling uh, program. And so there are parts of the organization that has increased, but our traditional print has actually uh, has gone down. And uh, could you perhaps give me an example of what kind of magazines we advertise in? And is there anything we could cut back there or on subscriptions? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, we advertise in two magazines, uh, two traditional, what you would call a magazine, and that's uh, um, this, what's it called, the Sport? Sport in Aurora. Sport in Aurora magazine, as well as Blades of Grass, which is the... Uh, uh, the second magazine run by the uh, Hockey Association with the Soccer Association. So we advertise in two, two magazines. I think that may be something to look at. Uh, I was also glad to see that the three annual leisure guides are fully covered by advertising costs. And I'm wondering if we could find, as uh, Councillor Tom was saying about advertising, maybe with respect to the trail maps, even the waste calendar, we might be able to find some sponsors for that. That's all for this part. Councillor Kim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Mr. Garvey. Um, thanks for putting this together. And on page three, uh, I see the less mandatory training I think from the previous meeting, the uh, mandatory training was not to be taken out, but can you explain why that was 
difference out to have a remaining budget of 38,000 when this should be closer to like 95,000 or so? Mr. Kirby? I, I think the consideration uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, was there's mandatory training and then there's training that we, uh, we have as far as management, uh, uh, management development, pre-management development, uh, courses that are not mandatory but useful, such as our software packages and, and um, uh, interest, uh, different uh, uh, business-related interests, uh, like Mr. Elliott said, dealing with difficult clients. And so these are captured in that. So well, there's a training that we, that we need to do and have to do through uh, that we call mandatory, and then there's the more, the, I would say, discretionary uh, training that we do that's not required by some some aspect of our job. So the reality is that if there weren't cuts in the survey, we'd actually have to look at our mandatory training, see if we can deliver it differently somehow, um, and and uh, uh, also look at our, um, our discretionary pod and, and deliver it differently. Um, so we would have, the reality is we would have to look at both pieces anyway. The, the, the point of, of netting it out was to uh, to show what the impact is going to be um, relative to our, our training program. Okay. Yes, uh, through Mr. Mayor, so the remaining budget, 38,520, is the core mandatory training, and then the mandatory training that's listed as 57,000 and change, that's kind of more peripheral mandatory training? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry for confusing the matter. The 38,000 is actually uh, the discretionary, discretionary non-mandatory, okay. but useful. So that that's where we would take uh, the Excel, the Word course, the um, our CRM training would come out of here. Um, uh, I, like I said, dealing with difficult clients, um, our pre-management training programs, okay. uh, those those would come under the thirty-eight thousand as well as this. Actually, also includes our our, our our conferences as well. So our professional conferences are. Um, are, um, are included that as well. So, okay. So, so that's, that's it. That's, that's it. I got it in reverse. Yes. Um, thank you. And through, again, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so last week, I think uh, the the issues that uh, most of the councillors had was uh, were that uh, they had a difficulty. Uh, making a decision based on not enough insufficient information, and and given the information that uh, we are hoping for in order to make an educated decision on um, in that particular line item for training and development and and, and the other items that we mentioned, um, I, I didn't see the necessary information that I was hoping for in terms of like for training and development. I was hoping for. What was already spent, and uh, you know what's what's already been allotted, and so forth, in order to, uh, to make that decision. Can you can you uh, explain like why that was not included? I gather that you know two or three days is not a lot of time for the, for the staff to uh, act. So you know I can empathize with that. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's the primary. We you know we. Uh, have between Tuesday and Thursday to get things prepared and, and ready. So this is what we, the information that we have at, the, at this time. Um, it shows the net impact of a 2015 cut. You can see in the history um, how the budget's moved and uh, the actuals. I think we can we can give a maybe a gross number, Mr. Elliott, but that wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to tell you whether that's mandatory or non-mandatory or conference registration or or just what, what have you, but, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And through you, uh, last question is, on on the first page of item 16, it says um, that staff report back to council throughout the 2015 fiscal year regarding the opportunities to meet this target. Uh, I was expecting a more a firm language in terms of this will be uh, confirmed and, and cut. How does that work when we're not sure whether we're able to meet this target or not throughout the year, given that um, September will be the, we'll deal, we will be dealing with 2016? Could you 
phrase that a little differently. I'm sorry, I didn't catch. Uh, I think I think the request from last week was that uh, at a very minimum, I think the number 130,000 uh, was put out there in addition to telecommunications and potentially other items. And you know, I personally anticipated that there would be a more firm response back in terms of. Uh, at, at the very least, 130,000 or thereabouts is going to be cut for this fiscal year. But in the language here, it states that uh, we report, staff will report back throughout the 2015 fiscal year. Given that there's not uh, much time until the 2016 fiscal year, when will we know whether these uh, cuts will be will be will be uh, attainable or not, Mr. Kirby? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, firstly, when Council establishes a, bun uh, a budget, that's the amount of money we have to spend. So, and if $130,000, it's actually $140,000 because we've already cut 10 through my cuts, so it's $140,000 plus the 100 in revenue. So, um, staff will have to make those adjustments. Where there's a, uh, we'll report back where there's a, a uh, policy decision that needs to be made. For instance, um, decisions related to user fees uh, on the revenue side need to be approved by this council. We're not in a position today to tell you that the revenue um, will go up in, will charge seniors or whatever group more money. We're not in a position to do that. And so the, the, the uh, uh, Councilor Thompson brought forward a target, a revenue target of, of $100,000. Similarly, on the, uh, uh, on the expenditure side, there may be areas that will require council's attention because they're, they're um, service level cuts. And um, so we would bring those back uh, when we identify them, and they have to be fairly soon. Um, uh, but we would try to identify those if, if council uh, chooses not to uh, uh, to adopt those or make those service level adjustments, then we would have to uh, not spend the money somehow, and then we address those things in the 2016 budget. Councilor, Councilor Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and that's sort of where I guess I, w I wanted to go as well. Um, on page two of the report, under the comments section, um, through you, Mr. Garvey. Mr. Garvey, you say that should Council not approve any of the recommendations staff, then Council would need to consider any shortfall in the budget amount in the 26th budget process. Can you just sort of expand on what you, you meant by that, that paragraph? Mr. Uh, okay. Specifically related to revenue through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if, uh, if staff propose a suite of 10 things that require uh, uh, for, to raise the revenue by $100,000, and council rejects eight of those ten, uh, or one of those ten, and uh, we don't achieve those um, in full. Council will have to address that next year because because of a budget pressure. Either we have to uh, adjust our revenues going forward in 2016 somehow to make up the difference, or council will have to consider that a pressure in going forward. So that's a bit of the challenge uh, that uh, is faced, especially on the revenue side. Uh, what if, what if council, what if staff recommend something that's not palatable um, to uh, to this table? So that's. And I guess that's part of the the challenge for me is about you know I, I'd want to make sure that uh, staff and council are in alignment of, of where the the cuts are from coming from. Um, if it's. Uh, uh, cuts directly related to service levels that have a direct impact to the residents uh, as opposed to some of the other cuts that have been proposed that are more internal, I mean, you know, that's a, that's a significant discussion. And, and so it would be nice prior to the budget being approved if we have a sense of where they're coming from. Um, so I, I guess my, my question to you, to you is, you know, following up on what Councillor Kim said, you know, granted there was a very short period of time to turn around this report and I appreciate the information you have put there. Um, if, if staff and yourself had a little bit more time, is it possible to, to give us a better indication of maybe some of the alternative options that are out there? Mr. Kirby? That's right, Mr. Mayor. Certainly, if we had more time, we could, uh, similar to what we did uh, with finding the, uh, the proposed changes uh, when I was tasked earlier. Um, so if we have more time, we can bring those, those types of things forward. Um, 
Uh, there, I mean, at this point, there's no there's no easy answers, uh, especially on the on the revenue side, because all the revenue changes need to come back to to, to council for approval, because it will require a change to the fees, the user fees bylaw. Um, so, but on this expenditure side, uh, it's also it's also a challenge, and we actually have to, regardless of what council does, we'll have to adjust our internal service service levels um, and adjust our programs as well. So. Certainly, if we had more t more time, we could do different things. And um, uh, so, so the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you, Mr. Garvey. And you know, I I think the the good part part of a uh, good portion of this is that um, you know there seems to be agreement around the table that uh, further reductions need to happen with the budget to make it uh, um, reasonable for the residents here in Aurora. The question is where should they where should they come from and where is best? And 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 I'm open to looking up alternative ideas um, uh, instead of what was previously suggested. The one challenge I'm having right now is, is uh, well, two of them actually. First off is that, you know, I'd like to have a better sense of where those are coming from as alternatives so that I have a sense of whether or not I'd be amenable to them. I don't want to get into the position that we approve the budget and down the road those cuts that are being proposed by staff are not necessarily what I in particular have in mind and then we, we run the chance of being in a deficit or an overspent position and so that, that is concerning. I guess the second piece really is, is more logistics. I mean, while technically this is not a reconsideration because we're still in the same meeting, in essence it is. And if we were to reverse what is on, on the, uh, the budget sheets and go with a, a blanket number and ask staff to come back, uh, I, would, I would assume that we would have in the same conversation in a couple of weeks. You know, perhaps a couple of weeks give staff uh, more time to put together a little bit more of an idea of where some of these budgetary cutbacks could come from, as opposed to what's already on the table, so that it at least helps me and maybe other members of council um, get a better sense of, of where those opportunities lie, and then we can have something to to uh, actually you know, debate, and as opposed to just being open-ended. Thank you, Councilor Council Gardner. Thank you, and I, I may have missed this, but on schedule, or sorry, amendment number one, page three, um, in the second item in the chart, less committee adjustment. That's all. Oh, that's what we did as a council. No, I know it wasn't committee adjustment. <laughs> uh, actually, I was wondering where. But I may have to ask later where the Accessibility Advisory Committee's budget is. But uh, I think it's not in this report, so I'll wait. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Um, I'm almost sorry I missed last week's meeting. Almost, but not entirely. Uh, I'm Councilor Abe, I, I apologize. You had your hand up. Mr. Mayor, you can speak before and I'll follow. And, and I thank you for taking the meeting last week, Councilor Abe. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. And um, so the, the challenge, quite obviously, is, and, and you, you summarized it, Councilor Thompson, is that if, if we're going to cut, you'd like to know where those cuts are. To, to, to see whether or not you approve of them, if you think they're appropriate. But Councilor Tom doesn't necessarily think they're appropriate, or I don't necessarily think they're appropriate. So how, how do we work that part through, quite frankly? Uh, my preference is that we give Mr. Garby either a percentage or a dollar number. And uh, I heard, I'm interested we're talking about training because I took a, a training course just a couple of weeks ago, uh, paid for by the hospital actually, because I sit on their board. Uh, and I, I learned a great term there, which is uh, NIFO, nose in, fingers out. So we know what's going on, but we don't tell, we don't get in there with our fingers. And uh, that's how I prefer to work. Obviously, others have different uh, preferences, and that's fine. But as an example, I don't swim, so why don't we cut the pools? We can save a lot of money that way. So I, I think that it, I think the only way we can do, in my opinion, we can do this fairly is that we, if, if we, if 230 is the magic number, then we go back to Mr. Garvey and say that, okay, we want you, uh, we're looking for a differential of $230,000. So parts can come from cuts, parts can come from revenues. If you remember, we had discussions not that long ago on 
uh, we're, we want to increase revenues, but we don't want to charge anybody to get those increased revenues. We've, we've had that both in, in particular fees and uh, for entrance to Woodfest. Uh, and then we had a whole discussion, we, we want to cut costs, but we're going to do the calendar, the waste calendar. So we, we've got to make a decision how we want to direct, because it's very difficult from staff's point of view to, to ping pong back and forth. It makes it very difficult for them to do that. And if there are particular issues that people want to address, that's fine, but we can't sit here and, and continue to pick the budget apart and go back and forth. And then Mr. Garvey has come with some ideas. Um, I would suggest, and if I'm hearing Councillor Thompson correctly, that we defer this for a couple of weeks um, to let them come back with some specifics and see how we can take it from there. Would that be fair assessment of your point of view, Councillor Thompson? Uh, yeah, you know, I just think it will get reconsidered. Right now. I think it's important enough that all nine I think the point is, is that, that, you know, otherwise it just ends up getting reconsidered the next time we have a full council. Right? And so we're going to rehash the same points in two weeks' time. And so maybe maybe it's more productive. It allows staff a little bit more time to provide a little bit more detail that Councilor Kim or Councilor Tom or anybody else is looking for. And then we have a have a, a full debate with all nine members of council around the table, and a decision can be made. Obviously, our next meeting is April seventh, and that's the final council budget. So maybe it has to be there. Councilor Abel. Uh, thank you. <coughs> um, I'm interested in the discussion. Um, so we made a decision without all council last week, and uh, now you want to wait. You don't want to make a decision this week. So I have. I just. I just point that out. I, mean, I, I, I don't think we have to be in agreement or disagreement. Um, but if it's. It, it really shows, in my opinion, this budget process. And I stated, I think, after year two last term that I'd like to see it change. And this is exactly why I have a problem with it. I'm going to compare Newmarket that in December they told staff to come up with a figure. And we're going through the same process, and now we're in April, where we're coming down to the last thing, and we're telling staff to come up with a figure. And we don't have time. I mean, three days, they can't bring all these numbers around. We have to decide what the cuts are. So th that's, that's an issue I have with the budget process. And it's put us in this sort of situation where, in my mind, we're, uh, uh, the mayor's knife was a very nice way of saying it. But I don't really think that we belong in the day-to-day -day management of the staff. We have to work with our staff. They're the experts in every field. Although we all bring a lot to the table, we still have to work and respect. It's a huge budget. It's, it's a lot of complicated um, municipal, legislative, and it takes us a while to get around it. I'm in the favor of saying there's a target number and meet it the best you can. We're already three complete months in. That's, that's another compounding issue we have here. Um, because you say for the year we want 150000 but not only that, we're just giving you nine months to do it, and we're only going to give you a couple of days to figure it out. And we have to approve it. So all these sort of items come. So my comment basically is, is we should change our budget process, and we wouldn't be in this position. It's difficult right now. Um, the, um, the, the biggest problem we have as a municipality is that we, uh, we have 60% of the infrastructure, and we get eight cents on every dollar collected for tax. The, um, we create infrastructure for businesses and people that work and income tax and corporate tax are all collected, but we don't get any of that money. We get a bit from the gas that is spent here, but that's all we get at the federal level. So we have a huge challenge. Uh, I would remind everyone that our province spends $11 billion to service the debt. That's just the interest. And if we could just take $1 billion off of that, so that debt at the province, we would each get, out of the 444 municipalities, $2 million. $2 million is 6%. So we have to, as a council, let's try and see where the big numbers are. And as a representative and uh, the FCM and the conferences we go to, a big, and when this is an election year, we have to make the federal government know that this urban agenda has to change. You have to start giving us back some of that money. We need that it's well established. That could have a huge impact, not just on ours, but everyone's. So 
I'm sort of giving an overall picture. I understand the return on investment for development professionally. Uh, yeah, I have to look no further than the Toronto Maple Leafs to see that if you had money in and development and players and personnel and scouting, you would have a championship team. When you look at other teams, they do that. You invest in the personnel and you get results and it pays long term. It absolutely does. I, I, it, 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 I'm passionate about our staff and our town and our community. I don't want to see us cannibalizing ourselves because of the pressures that we have. I would like, I think it's very clear where we're going with this. I did have conversations with other councillors around this. I'm okay with making a decision tonight. Um, we, uh, I don't want to refer this and, and get our tax into, what if someone doesn't make it for the next one, uh, then are we going to postpone our budget and do it again? Um, the, the councillors that were away told us that they wanted to be there and made their points made, and uh, we are effectively coming in with a target and uh, reducing the tax. I think we're going to have some other ideas on how to do that. Um, so those are sort of my thoughts. I would go ahead with this recommendation. I was not in favor of that committee last week. And uh, the, the, the reason was is I think we should respect and we should uh, work with our staff. And if we give them a target, then let them do it. Uh, it's probably going to be a better solution to us going in and trying to manage it and pick what departments and what uh, objectives they have within their departments on how we do it. Um, so, and those are sort of my thoughts. If I were to go in, I would go in at the biggest line item. Uh, make, you know, a little we change to their item to make, uh, rather than go and pick a line item that devastates a whole program that they've had in place. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments on this, Councillor Kim? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I understand uh, Councillor Abel's uh, viewpoint, um, but, but the interest of efficiency, I suspect that if last week's decision is overturned, someone will, will pull this item anyway um, on April 7th, and we'll end up being on square one, and uh, I, I'm more inclined uh, towards Councillor Thompson's view in, in that uh, we let staff go back and have some more time to deal with this and, and try to find some items. And um, and if, if that were the case, uh, this question is for everyone around the table, would it be wise to uh, present uh, CEO, uh, Mr. Garvey, uh, with the number tonight, so that he know he and the staff know what the guidelines are, or do we just uh, give no figure whatsoever tonight? Um, I'm thinking that we should uh, provide some kind of a figure, as you suggested, and, uh, and give some kind of guidance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't know if that question is directed to me or not, Councillor. I don't know if that question is directed to me or not. So it was just for uh, Mr. Round the Table to see in terms of what uh, other um, Mr. Garvey and other uh, uh, members of council uh, think of that. I'm not sure if that's a question I'd like to you or not. I can, sure. Through Mr. Mayor, it's our preference that you give us a target, and that's the purpose of, of uh, um, the first stanza there, is that you give us a target so that we can, the problem, it's part of the difficulty we're having is we bring forward suggestions for cuts, which we did. Some of them were accepted, some of them were not. Uh, it's, and if we knew what the objective of council was, we only want a 3.44% tax, or 4.44% tax increase, make it work. We'll come, we'll come back and make it work. We'll show you how it works. And if we come back if, without that target, we'll come back with a 4.44 budget. And then if the target moves, that becomes increasingly difficult and it takes more time. So our strong preference is that council resolve to, uh, to tell us an amount or a, a tax rate increase that's, that's palatable, then we can go away and fit, uh, fit our programs uh, to that budget. That's, that's, uh, that's my perspective. Councilor, does that help, does that help answer your question? Yes. Okay, if I, if I understood Mr. Weber correctly, so, so he would prefer uh, a number to go back with, 
and if I could start with uh, the bidding, so to speak, <laughs> I would like 3.95% just on the cuts and not including the, uh, the revenue uh, that was suggested. I, I'm sorry, that one I do not follow. Okay. Well, we said that uh, based on 100,000 in revenue collection, potentially if that's reached, and 130,000 from the advertising and uh, uh, learning and development uh, cut, that was 230,000, and that would come down to 4.44. So I would like to put in a suggestion that I would ideally like to have that number under 4%, but without even considering the revenue component uh, of, of those figures. Now, I'm open to suggestions from other members of council, but uh, I'd like to put that out there to uh, see uh, whether, uh, if anyone else is in agreement with, with a number like that. So, so if I understand, Mr. Elliott, are you furiously fingering the keyboard over there? To so if Councilor Kim, if I understand you, we're, we are currently at 5.09. So you want, you want to get that number down to 3.95 with no increase in revenue, is that correct? That's correct. So Mr. Elliott, that would take a reduction of uh, $700,000. Very close to Mr. Elliott? I'm just, I'm just trying to pull it up. So I'm going to assume, Mr. Chair, that uh, the first uh, paragraph was is that they all be uh, combined and amended. So we'll take those off the books. We'll go back up to the 5.09 level. Yep. Okay. And you're trying to get to 395? 700,000 dollars? Yeah, pretty close. So you're looking for cuts for 700,000 dollars? Uh, that's possibly what I was, I was thinking, yes. No. And if that's high back there, to go from 509 to 395 is only a reduction of 1.14. And so, I mean, that's really only 400,000 and change if a 1% is 350, 370. So. So $410,000 to get us from 509 to 395. So that's $410,000 in cuts. Correct? Yes. And and I'm not sure that's after taking the other three items off the books. Yeah. Yeah. Castor Top? Well, I, no, I, actually, at this point, not that thought. Uh, because that doesn't fit with what we're dealing with right here. So we either have to pass defeat or defer this. I'll wait till Councillor Thompson comes back. Mr. Kirby. Through Mr. Mayor, just, just as a reminder, the fire plus their fiscal strategy equals 2.05. So the effective tax rate for the library for all the programs, including the library, would be 1.9. So did I do that math right now? Keep up with you. Three point nine five minus two point oh five is one point nine oh. Okay, we're gonna come we're gonna come back to this. We're gonna have we can bench on this out of the discussion. Uh, well, I, I'm just gonna I, let's deal with this right now because this this is gonna take us down a totally different path and it's got it's, it's not anything to do with what we've got on the floor. Thank you. You're absolutely correct. Um, any more comments on this? On the motion which is on the floor? Mr. Mayor, for clarification, Mr. Mayor, for clarification, if we voted on this, will we be allowed to make more suggestions on what cuts could be? So this wouldn't be the final figure. So we have to, I, I, just so I understand that and the, all members understand that. We're not saying we won't take more cuts at this stage. We're just dealing with this item and then we can deal with other suggestions. We could even ask for another motion to say we want more cuts. If we, okay, thank you. 
Councillor Thompson, to this motion. It's actually just to clarify the motion. So the motion before us asks council to insert an amount in paragraph three. What is that amount? It's underlined. I, I thought that's where, Ms. where Councillor Kim was going, but you said we're not going to do that. Now we're going to vote on a motion without identifying the amount? Mr. Pratt? Uh, thank you. I think, Mr. Chair, certainly I think we'd be looking for an amendment to the motion on the floor to replace the underlined uh, words and amount as directed by Council. Um, but I would comment that the, the motion on the floor is a combination of increasing total departmental revenue and decreasing total departmental expenses to the comments that were made by committee. Uh, set the target, the tax rate increase target, uh, currently, you know, what, 4.44%, and then staff would come back and say, well, here's the revenue enhancements that we're talking about, and here's the deductions to meet that. So it's a combination. It's to set the target so that staff can go back and look at revenue options as well as cuts. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. So has anybody got an amount? Councilor Kim? Sorry. What's your number? The number is 3.95%, uh, uh, not including the revenue figures. Mr. Clark, is that appropriate? Yeah, I guess. I think, Mr. Chair, uh, the difficulty is that changes the, the motion. The, 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 the motion that's before you to be amended is to direct staff to go back uh, or to, to essentially to bring forward a budget that has a, a maximum residential tax increase of X percent that's made up of a combination of revenues and expenses, uh, revenue enhancements and expense uh, reductions. So the, it'd be difficult to accommodate that 3.95% as described within the framing of this motion without actually understanding how it works with the revenue side. So if you're telling us to use the 3.95%, but just on expenses, the part of the motion that reads total departmental revenues becomes moot, really. So it's kind of contrary in a way. Councilor, you understand? Is that clear as mud? Yes. So to provide some flexibility then, I propose 300,000 in cuts and 100,000 in revenue increase. A second for that? Councillor Irwin. Councillor Peart? I, I just want to put things in, in a little bit of perspective. I'm not sure everybody's thinking about this. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Elliott, what's the average person paying in taxes in Aurora? Could you be a bit more definitive, Councillor? Roughly speaking, the average tax bill. What's the average tax bill? Mr. Elliott? I don't, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I don't really have an average tax bill, but we have used a $500,000 assessed property as, uh, as the taxes. Uh, that being the case, a $500,000 home um, pays approximately $1,800 in town share tax. So what's, what's the combined tax? Uh, just under 5000 so we're talking about a, a 2.88 blended rate increase versus a 2.7 blended increase when we look at the numbers. I'd like to know what the differences between those two rate increases are. In dollars, you mean? In dollars, I, I just want to know what we're talking about. Point one eight. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're sitting around the table. We're saying let's let's throw out a four hundred thousand dollar number. I just want to know what it looks like. What what the difference in in what we're talking about will equate to. About nine dollars a year. 
know, I, I recognize that we need to strive and we always need to make sure that we're doing the best that we can. But to be sitting around the table for hours and hours and hours and hours, over $9 a year, I, I just wanted to make sure that we're aware of, of what we're doing here. And I think it's important that we strive to get the lowest amount possible. Um, but at this point, we're looking at a difference of $9 a year you know, on a $500,000 home. I just wanted to make sure that's, you know, put in perspective for everybody sitting around the table. I think we can do better, but when we're looking at where we are and what the increases are, you know, I, I, I just want to make sure that we're all on board and on the, the same page with that. And those are my comments for right now. Other speakers to the amendment? Councillor Well, I, I'm, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Mayor. I had a, another suggestion. I thought we could do a little bit better than just what uh, Councillor Kim has put on the table. So I'm hopeful that uh, either way, how we vote on this, that we still have that opportunity. Um, I appreciate Councillor Perry's uh, when you put things into perspective. I still believe we can do better as a council going for huge funds. Um, than picking at what we have here. Um, however, in the spirit of working together, I will uh, support uh, a challenge to the uh, uh, to the staff. But I, I would have used a little less number. I would have used the number here. And then I have other suggestions, and I think other councillors do at the table have other suggestions. We'll probably end up better than what we're what uh, Councillor Kim is. Um, Suggesting so, uh, I, I was hoping the number would be for the for the the challenge to the staff would be uh, um, a little less uh, of a challenge for him at, at this stage, um, and I and I don't want to start speaking to the other suggestions until we get off this topic. So um, I'll, I'll hear from the other comments. I, I would like to move and make a decision. Uh, so I'll, I'll listen to the, what, are, what the other comments are. My, my basic comment is, is I would have got, I would have preferred to have revenue plus staff cuts in around the 250,000 range. Was was I was, uh, and that's what it looks like is being proposed by the CAO. So I, I would work with that, and then I have some other ideas. Uh, Okay. I would like to bring so it's a bit higher than I wanted, but it's it's not it's in the ballpark, and it's under thousand is going to make much of a difference uh, as Councilor Perry has outlined. I think it's going to be in the, the dollar range. So, okay. Councilor Tom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, with what's proposed, what would the so we're looking at three hundred thousand in cuts and a hundred thousand dollars in uh, revenue that's on the floor right now. Yeah. Correct. Correct? Yeah, Councillor Ever second. Yeah. So I suppose, Mr. Mayor, if I may ask uh, Mr. Elliott, I'm looking right now at the uh, 2015, 2016, uh, 18, 17, 18 projections, the, the little graph. And we have five, what we're sitting at now is 5.09. We have 4.6, 4.47, 2.87. So the projections over four years are that, are the pressures are going to be reduced. Um, I agree with Councillor Abel, but I think that perhaps looking this year at some of the bigger ticket items and perhaps uh, realizing those uh, cuts perhaps in future years is spread out uh, might be an interesting way to go. But if we were to uh, vote on the 300000 reduction and $100,000 in uh, additional revenue, what would that um, look like, what would that impact have on the future of three years in this projection model? Would it have any effect on that or would it do? The, the next three years remain the same. I don't know if you can comment on that at this point in time. It's very difficult to say. It, it, again, it depends on, on the, the very nature of the expenditures, if it's a one-time cut and they come back, or if it, or is it a permanent cut? Um, it, it depends. Uh, last time we were talking, uh, training and development, someone, uh, I, I guess it was Councillor Humphreys, was suggesting we could take it off this year and put it back next year. So that would be a one-year cut. Uh, difficult to put back in because it becomes a pressure next year, of course. Um, uh, we would have to see where, the, where they go and report uh, on, on a fluid basis as to where these out, outlooks go. 
my, my suggestion would be, uh, quite possibly, if you reduce it this year, you're now taking money out of the base that's in the assumption of those future years, so your impacts are going to even be higher. Justin? Thank you. I think that's something that we should be bearing in mind because if we decide that a 3.95 or whatever the, the, the percentage number ends up being uh, for this year, um, just to have the same conversation, but we're talking almost about less in the years to come, it perhaps could get us into a situation. Um, that's why I think, you know, perhaps a target, obviously, my preference would probably be a target that's a bit more. Uh, but smaller, perhaps 200,000 or 250,000, whatever that is, and that way we can make sure that uh, you know we don't get into trouble down the road with cuts that perhaps make sense this year, but not next year. So that would probably be my preference. Um, but I guess I'll listen to more comments around the table as well. Mr. Elliott, you've got a, a chart there that you showed me this afternoon. It might be an opportune to share that with Council at this point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is the Fiscal Sustainability Index that um, Treasurer Hughes from uh, the Region of York introduced us to uh, when he came to uh, share with us. This is uh, from the City of Edmonton. It's focused on the expenditure side of the budget only. And what it is doing is it's measuring the, the growth of your total expenditures compared to the growth of your municipality plus the growth of inflation. Because obviously in an inflationary period, if nothing changes, your costs go up. If your community is growing by 5%, your costs should also go up by 5% in, in a status quo environment. And so this index suggests when we look at our core operations, which are in the, in the blue, or sorry, in the green bars, that uh, our FSI is very, very low, meaning that we have constrained our expenditures to a point perhaps where our ability to maintain our services is jeopardized. So perhaps it's not a fiscal sustainability index, but rather a services sustainability index, because it's the expenditure side where we are providing those services, programs, and uh, operational activities. And so when you constrain those too far, there will have no doubt um, ultimately some sense of service reduction in the community uh, things will begin to uh, become apparent that we've, we've perhaps cut maybe too deep. It's difficult to tell from this, but with an FSI down uh, below, f looks like it's even below four there, uh, it's very difficult. One of the drivers that's driving that way down this year is our population is estimated to be growing by about 8% this year, uh, which is significant. And so 8% plus the 2.7% uh, uh, CPI is 10%. So it's suggesting the FSI that our total expenditure budget should be going up by 10%, and it's not. It's far less than that. And so, again, my comment is uh, the more I think about this and, and, and wrap my head around this fiscal sustainability index, as I said earlier, it's useful in, in one perspective. It's, it's one indicator that we have to consider, but I'm very concerned about its, uh, its forecasting our ability to maintain our expected levels of service. So those are my comments, sir. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Councillor Tom, that speaks a bit, I think, to your question. It does. Like I said, I think I'd, I'd like to maybe get more comments around the table before commenting further. Other comments to uh, the member, Councillor Thompson? Uh, yes, really, Mr. Elliott. You know, Mr. Elliott, I mean, I did uh, speak with you today about with crisis. I think it would be helpful, for Council, to actually see those numbers because when when I looked at the fiscal sustainability index and, and did the calculation myself with regards to um, growth projections over the previous few years and going forward, it was hard to duplicate the numbers that you've created. And so I think it would be very helpful for Council if you could provide uh, the growth estimates and, and the number, the raw data that you use so that we can take a look at it. Through Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to shoot it up by email as we speak. I, I uh, have it in front of me. So it's a, it's a single page, and it shows the CPI, the population growth, uh, the actual population numbers that have been used in it, 
and then uh, the various prior year expenditure final budgets that we have uh, approved at council straight out of the uh, uh, budget reports and then we've made a, a handful of miscellaneous uh, adjustments that you'll uh, be able to understand and if you don't uh, i'd be happy to give you a call and uh, to discuss them but uh, it's pretty straightforward to understand appreciate that and, and just for further clarifications when we look at 2015 you said that uh, you used an estimated eight percent population growth you add the mpi or cpi whichever one you, you used which was around two to three so you know uh, you know that's about uh, i guess 11 but when i look at the tax levy you indicated five were you not including the 2.2 percent from new growth related revenue tax levy side is a function also not just of the uh, expenditure side, but it's the non-tax revenue side is not keeping pace with inflation or growth. Well, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't make myself clear. When we look at the increase in spending year over year, yes. that's, that's the top line number, right? And I thought I heard you say 5% because that represented the 5% tax levy. But really, the year over year increase in spending not only includes the tax levy increase, but also includes the increase from growth revenue, the 2.2%. So really, that top line number should be, if, if we, we use the old index that was used for this one, 7.29. Um, because that's that's the actual increase in spending. I think year I, over year. I think I understand you. For 2015, the CPI was 2.67. Mm -hmm. the number that we used, and the population growth is 8.6. For a total of 11.27. And what was the top line number? And the top line number we used was uh, we adjusted upward to um, sorry downward to um, 55,000. Fifty five million six, a change a year over year of two million dollars. Which is what percentage? Uh, four? Four. So that goes back to my question how is it four percent if, you know, in our budget numbers we know that two point two percent is the increase from growth related revenue? And on top of that, we're looking at a 5.09% increase in the tax levy, which was the number at the time of these slides, or even if it was higher. So that's why I was having trouble duplicating it, because my number would be upwards around 7 or 8. And uh, again, I think we're tying, to, tying together the whole puzzle, and there's a gap on the non-tax revenue side keeping pace with the tax rate or the, or the pressures on the expenditure side. So, any general comment? I really like the Financial Sustainability Index. I think that is something we need to utilize going forward. I, I would agree with Councillor Abel and others around the table that this budget process that we've used is challenging, especially as we get to the end cycle, and we've seen it year over year for us. And, and I certainly think it's something that we need to um, revisit and revisit immediately going forward. And I think that the tools that uh, the City of Edmonton and, and uh, the region are looking at with regards to this FI, FSI can help us move forward and move away from these line item discussions and more towards a higher level discussion with regards to how to, to budget um, and deal with service levels. So I support it. I just think we need to get some clarification on how these numbers are derived. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that as we um, uh, do a wrap up of the budget after we ever get done, that um, we all recognize that it's time for a change and we look at some, some new approaches to improve the process because, um, you know, it's been said around the table, you know, here it is three months later and we're still debating what number we should be. Mr. Elliott, it's, it's probably not appropriate to try and do these numbers tonight, so you volunteered to, to get that out, and I think that's probably the better uh, approach. Um, so we're, we're back to um, Councillor Kim's amendment. Any more comments on Councillor Kim's amendment? Could you repeat the, uh, Mr. Clerk? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, thank you, uh, you, Mr. Mayor, to the committee. Uh, Councillor Kim has proposed a uh, slight revision of the words, but so that the, there would be uh, $300,000 in expense cuts and $100,000 in revenue, and that would be the target set for staff. Correct, Councillor Kim, just confirming, and this been moved and seconded. There's no further comments or questions on that. Calling the vote on Councillor Kim's amendment. Uh, 
All in favor? Contrary. The amendment carries. Okay. Yep. What were the numbers again? Okay. It was again. All in favor? Four in favor. Three against. Back to the main motion as amended. Could you bring that back up, Linda, please? Back to the main motion as amended. Then, any further comments on the main motion as amended? Councillor Thompson. Through you to the clerk. Um, now that we've identified a, a global amount, those uh, those items that were previously decided upon are now going to be reversed, um, but um, they could be reintroduced at the final budget meeting, could they not? Or they could be reintroduced by the, the CAO if they, if he uh, and staff, if they choose that that would be a, a reasonable place to uh, uh, have some savings, could it not? Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, through Mr. Mayor to committee, of course, any recommendations of uh, general committee uh, can be amended, changed uh, by council at council meeting. Uh, so certainly they could be introduced as part of the uh, special council meeting to approve the budget. Um, uh, that's definitely an option. Councilor Abel. Through you, Mr. Mayor. If uh, one of the ways that we're going to save uh, expenditures is through service cuts, are we going, as a council, going to be advised of that? Do we have to approve it if it beats the, I think our threshold is 100000 Could you explain to council that could you, to meet this objective, uh, be doing some service cuts? And, I mean, what if we went a month without garbage pickup or something? I, I don't know what we have in mind, but uh, would service cuts be part of this... Um, Strategy to get That's to that. That's a fairly generic question, Mr. Bebby. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I honestly don't know how we can avoid service cuts. Uh, once we stripped out, like even if we stripped out the entire travel uh, training and conference budget, um, I don't know um, how we can uh, not cut services. Yes, sir. The question was, uh, would we be advised of those before they came into effect? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I think you'd have to be. Uh, and I think the general direction was to bring back the cuts, if I'm not mistaken. That was the intent uh, in a number of weeks. Any other comments on the motion? Councilor Gardner. I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time, Mr. Mayor, but um, we are at the point we are, where we are kind of suggesting uh, suggestions to staff that are nickel and diamond. You know, uh, no, we're, we're voting on the We're just voting on this, but I'll be, okay. If there's no other. Okay. I, I will not support this because, in my opinion, we're, we're making a decision on something we have absolutely no idea what the ramifications are. We have no idea, and I, I think that is, I don't think that is good planning, so I will not support the motion as amended. Calling the vote. All in favor of the motion as amended, please. Hands up high. Contrary. Motion carries. Councilor Abel. Um, Mr. Mayor, I would like to put uh, on the table a motion uh, for that would affect this budget. I'm sorry? I would like to put a motion or an idea on the table for further cuts. So okay, well, I'm going to go to Councilor Gardner first because she did have uh, something earlier in the evening. Thank you. Going to the council administration section, uh, which is number six in our budget. Um, I'm looking at the committees and uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Elliott. Mr. Elliott, as far as I remember, um, the Economic Development Committee was spending $8,000 towards the Chamber Awards. And we, we didn't have those last year. We're not going to have them this year. But the figure for the committee is 8.5. So, 
So it looks to me like we've kept that $8,000 in and that we never took it out last year. Mr. Art? Three, Mr. Chair, that's correct. The uh, Chamber Awards uh, $8,000 is uh, still included in this budget. And uh, if the Chamber is not having those or if the town is not providing support to them, then uh, perhaps there's validity in removing it. And uh, any idea where the $8,000 went from last year? Mr. Hart? I think it went to surplus, didn't it? It wasn't spent. That's correct. Thank you. Um, with respect to the community grants, uh, through Mr. Mayor and Mr. Downey, Mr. Downey, we have 31. Mr. Downey is just, Mr. Downey Mr. Downey oh, no, has left. left. Okay. Then uh, referring yes, to the comment that Councillor Tom had last week, if we are going to ask uh, staff to look at cuts in education and training, then I think as council we need to do that as well. Uh, with the exception that the new councillors would have uh, whatever they feel they need to spend for this year to get up to speed. I'm sorry, what's your point? My point is we, we need as a council to be careful about our education and training budget as well. We have $27,000 there. I'm just putting it out there for now. Okay. Mr. Downey, the um, $8,000 from the uh, Chamber Awards, we didn't spend that last year for the economic... Mr. Ellis already confirmed that. Sorry, then what was my question? Advertising, I think. No, it wasn't Edward. Oh, sorry. So sorry. I'm on community grants. Did we actually spend $31,000 last year, and that is the requested budget for this year? Mr. Uh, Mayor, we did not spend it all last year, and I believe the same amount is included in this year's budget. Any, through you, Mr. Mayor, any idea how much money we did spend? $14,000. So that's another area that could be looked at. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my, uh, I would like to draw attention to the uh, uh, Central York Fire uh, line of 1.3 percent, and this uh, is uh, across the board for our term and going into the first year of the next term, I believe. And it is there in the placeholder to. Um, put on a new crew as according to the master fire plan, which we have not yet received. I don't think it's official yet. It's in draft form, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think it's an excellent idea to put money as a placeholder for something that we know that's going to happen. And uh, last, anyone that was on last council can testify the impact that can have because we carried 6% over our four years adding that on because there was nothing in the kitty for the last fire crew. However, seeing as this is a higher forecast budget and as we go and look at our last year, it is less. What I propose is to take 0.3 of the 1.3 and put it onto the last year and thereby giving us a reduction on this year's tax rate of 0.3. So that is my proposal. I'm looking for a seconder, and I'll speak to the merits of it. Councilor Perry? So well, my thought, Mr. Mayor, is that um, we could every year going forward see if we want to put another point one on so that it would blend in. Um, we may find other revenues and other impacts as we go through the term. The, the big difference is, is we put 1% in, which represents about 350000 for something that we know may come down the road in three or four years from now. So uh, I, I think it would lessen the impact, and that's what we want to try and do for the first uh, part of our budget. So that 0.3 would bring us down on top of the others to 3.6. 3.55, somewhere in there, Mr. Mayor. So that's that's the nature of my uh, on our on our impact. Mr. Allen, do you have any comments on the uh, on the 0.3 percent of the fire budget? I do know that uh, for next week you're going to be seeing the um, uh, 
the draft Century York Fire budget that's been approved by JCC, and it's coming to our Royal Council for comment, back to New Market for approval. And uh, uh, the recommendations uh, for at JCC coming up are going to be uh, pressing ahead with the acquisition of a new fire hall. Uh, the recommendations on the table are to stage uh, over a period of years the hiring of that new crew. I. Uh, I think taking the point three to the back uh, would impact the total uh, total count that we need because uh, you're reducing the base, and so it compounds. Um, I'd have to do some study on it as to, as to what the actual impacts are, but uh, it's difficult to suggest whether this is an effective uh, approach. Councilor. Uh, well, my comment would be it's more effective than what was done the term before, where it was zero. So, um, and could, would you give us an idea of what New Market is putting in, into their placeholder? Because I believe they have a different strategy. Mr. Hutt? Uh, I haven't seen their specific strategy, but uh, based on a conversation with the treasurers and the CAOs together in, uh, in the room with the fire chief, uh, they were working on a similar six-year flatline strategy uh, as ours. Uh, I it's one three for them or, or one two for them. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, Mr. Hutt? I'm not sure whether it's 1.3 for them or 1.5 or 1.1. Okay. I don't know. But it's a it's a straight line approach. That's, that's my understanding. I had a conversation uh, just two, three days ago, and it's not a straight line. So the council will decide it. My point is is that we're we're a high end now, and we're. We're taking away services, uh, impacting services. This is a way to reduce it without impacting services. Put a placeholder in there for something that we haven't ratified and adopted. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that we can uh, realize a further saving in our tax impact this year. Thank you. Councillor Thompson? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Mr. Elliott. Mr. Elliott, just to pick up on what you said, just so I, I understand it clearly. The point three reduction in dollars equals about roughly a hundred thousand dollars, and so, if I understood you correctly, you said that by um, uh, reducing it this year, there's a cumulative effect that adds up, and so the pressure in that final year would not be a hundred thousand; it would be the accumulation of a hundred thousand dollars per year. So it'll be three or four hundred thousand dollar pressure in that final year. So, in addition to needing to put one point three away for fire. We'd also have to adjust for that pressure of three to four hundred thousand, which would be another full point or a point in a bit. So then fire would be a two point three to two point seven percent pressure in that final year. Did I did I did I say that correctly? Mr. Right. That, that's correct. Just on the fingers, that's the math that I would have to do in detail. I appreciate the clarification. And and that I guess similar to yourself, I'd want to see that some more because um, I think that the last time I saw um, the outlook for 2018, I think it was 3% or something like that. So now we're at 4 and a bit. And, um, you know, as we've seen in previous years, sometimes when we outlook to two or three years, by the time we get to that number, other pressures have come along and that number has risen as well. And so, um, you know, it's a question of, of we might be creating a, a significant pressure that's even greater on in 2018 versus 2015. So, thank you. Any other comments to Councillor Abel's amendment? Councillor Abel. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Elliott, I have, I have a little trouble uh, with the term. The $100,000 that we would knock off this year for that reserve for the fire department, can you explain how that becomes a $400,000 pressure in three years? Sounds like a good investment scheme to me. <laughs> it, it is because what you're doing is you're uh, um, you're taking it out of the base, and so it's not a revenue now. And so if you're only going to put 1.3 in next year, you're still shy by 100,000 in that year towards my total goal, and then 100,000 shy in the following year, and it compounds. And so this is why at the end of five years you would be so, five so perhaps 600,000. So if I'm clear, the proposal that I'm making now for one, if you do one for every year following, is we would become compounded to some three or four hundred thousand at the end? Because my proposal is just for this year. Yes, but it's missing from the base permanently. I still have to understand that. 
the way I look at it is about the 1.3 in every year, which is approximately 500,000, let's just use it as a, a roundabout number. If I put in 500,000 over four years, I have 200, no, 2 million, 2 million. And if I'm 100,000 short the first year, I would have accumulated 1.9 million. Why am I 400,000 short instead of 100,000? Just in layman's terms. If I may, it's, uh, it, it's the compounding effect of, of percentages. And it would be almost the same as saying, let's take uh, an investment, earn 10% a year for 10 years. What would we have? Your suggestion would be like knocking off the first two thirds of a year, and so what does the end result be? It's significant. It's more than just the single year impact. I'd be happy to walk you through it on the yeah, because uh, I don't understand if it's online. interest if it's interest rates, and they're at significant they're at historically low right now. It has nothing to do with interest, interest rates. You're taking a hundred thousand dollars out of the base total tax levy this year, and you're going to put back the same amount that you were going to next year and so on. So uh, I think perhaps it's best we take it offline or perhaps Michael Thompson or uh, Councilor uh, Thompson. If the seconder is okay with it, I'll table the motion till next week until you can show us how 100,000 becomes 400,000 in four years. Councilor Peer, you okay with retiring it? Okay. Or tabling it, I said. For the next well, you can, you can put it back on. Then you need a motion table. We don't have a meeting next week, by the way. So okay. this is again. So this is the only opportunity we have. No, no, because we don't. We're not. I mean, we can very easily push out our budget schedule. We're not. Yeah, because we have two councillors that aren't. We're not cemented in stone on that one, by the way. I'll do as recommended and withdraw it. Is that the recommendation? Yes, sir. Any other comments? Any other items? Do we have another budget meeting, Councillor Tom? I just, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a question. Uh, it's similar to what Councillor Abel's now withdrawn motion was about, was, which was that we seem to be splitting um, costs over four years. Um, the con contribution to the fiscal strategy, I'm not saying we should wipe it out, but it's higher this year, and then it, and then it goes down over the, over the four years. Now that, if you can perhaps uh, let us know why that is, perhaps, uh, Mr. Elliott, are we, are we depleted now that we need to, you know, increase the levels of our reserves, and then that, that need is going to be lesser over the next four years? Is it something that we can, you know, look at making uh, even in terms of our contributions uh, over the next four years? Again, I'd just like your expert opinion on that, if I may. Mr. Elliott? I'll try. It's the magic of mathematics. It's the uh, the base in the first year, and it's uh, it's a very similar amount in each year. And so, as the base goes up each year, as a percentage of that base, it gets smaller. The base is getting bigger, but the amount is fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Council, this was supposed to be the last. Uh, GC budget meeting, uh, but my uh, thought is that we probably need at least one more, um, but not for a couple of weeks because we've given councils, uh, excuse me, we've given staff uh, some uh, onerous tasks. So my suggestion is that we recess uh, this meeting uh, for another meeting at the call of the chair, and that tomorrow night we at council we postpone the April 7th budget meeting. I'm sorry? Well, uh, April the 7th is it's a, regular, a regular night, isn't it? We had a 4 o'clock budget. Oh, it's a 4 o'clock. I don't think it was going to happen. So we're, we'll do that if that's okay with council. Then we'll recess this to another GC budget meeting at the call of the chair, uh, which will be done in conjunction with the rest of council. We're okay with that? Could someone put that motion on the floor, please? 
Councillor Dunn. The vote, we, we have to vote on this motion as amended. We haven't done that Thank yet. you very much. Um, no, we did. We did. Yeah, we did. We, uh, we, were, we were discussing um, Councillor Eagle's comments. Councillor Eagle, you putting a motion on the floor to recess? Second. Councillor Thompson, all in favor then? Contrary. That's carried. Thank you, staff.